All right, so the video I didn't think I'd ever have to make. I keep seeing idiot, um, people on the internet talking about how if you're having a gaming PC or building a gaming PC, you can only have 32 gigs of RAM as the minimum. 16 gigs of RAM just doesn't cut it in 2022 for a gaming PC. All right, I'll bite because I have a gaming PC and it's got 16 gigs of RAM in it. And I also do video editing, you know, YouTube and seems to work just fine for me, but maybe I am wrong. So I thought I would go ahead and actually test out my system usage with 16 gigs of RAM in it. But to make the video more exciting, I thought, what the hell? Why don't we actually just take a look and see what happens if I go down to eight gigs of RAM and also what would happen if I double up and go to 32 gigs of RAM for science. All right, so for baseline, my PC is an i9-10850K with 16 gigs of Teen Group Delta RGB running at 3200 megahertz CL16. And for gaming and content creation, things like that, typically I'm gonna have three or four uh, Chrome tabs going, as well as Discord and whatever video game I happen to be playing or editing software, etc. So I'm gonna go with that as a baseline. Keep in mind, if you have Spotify and 1500 other tabs open or something like that, your RAM usage is obviously gonna be significantly more than mine, but I feel having some windows open is a pretty good, you know, middle of the road baseline for everybody whereas you know having nothing open at all is probably not very reasonable and then on the other end for you guys that just don't know how to close down apps waste your money I don't care all right so for the baseline here running just esports titles like CSGO and Fortnite for CSGO my system with those tabs and discord open runs at about eight and a half gigs of RAM and remember that is total system consumption not just CSGO by itself and then for Fortnite, it ran at about 10 and a half gigs of RAM on my system with the aforementioned applications open with it. So for eSports, we are well under the 16 gig threshold or maximum that I have available in my system. So let's try some harder to play games. So for Borderlands 3, we were using about 11 and a half gigs of RAM, whereas with Far Cry 5, we were using about 11 gigs. And then I also threw in Apex Legends because it was an excuse for me to go play Apex Legends again. And for that, system memory usage was about 10 and a half gigs for, through those games. So even AAA titles, seems like we can still get by with 16 gigs of RAM without any kind of problem in 2022. Now for editing and content creation, for editing purposes, I just rendered out a video that I had together. And I was using about 12 to 12 and a half gigs of RAM with that. For streaming, I was using about 13 gigs of RAM, and that was just a basic stream with just a game and a webcam. So at that point, we're starting to push closer to the 16 gigs of RAM. Now, full disclosure here, if you're running a bunch of plugins or you know different screens and titles, stuff like that inside of your content creation, be it you know plugins for DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere or even just OBS if you're streaming, you're probably gonna bump up close to that 16 gigs of RAM. Once again, you can manage, you can get by with it, but at that point, I'll concede, you may want to look into, depending on how many you have in there, and it's going to have to be a lot, you might want to go to 32 gigs of RAM there. All right, so it's pretty clear that 16 gigs of RAM is still plenty of RAM to get you by for a gaming PC here in 2022 and probably for the foreseeable future. All right, so 16 gigs of RAM is plenty to get you by in 2022, but what would happen if you drop down to, let's say, 8 gigs of RAM? Well, we did the same testing with 8 gigs of RAM. I went out to Jawa.gg and picked up a Kingston Fury uh, 8 gigabyte and still dual channel, so 2 by 4 gigs, still 3200 megahertz CL16. And we actually ran the same test using 8 gigabytes of RAM. For esports titles, be it Fortnite or CSGO, we're basically were running about 7.5 to 8 gigs, so using all the system memory that was available. Once again, keeping Windows open and, and Discord, etc. Uh, for the harder to play titles, once again, uh, Borderlands 3, Far Cry 5, and Apex Legends, all of those actually maxed out the system RAM too. So the question being is, since I maxed out all the system RAM, what happens? So what happens when you use all of the RAM in your computer is your computer actually will start writing to what's called a swap or a page file. So instead of writing your active programs into RAM, it will write it to your hard drive. Now, luckily, I have a Crucial P5 hard drive, which writes at about 3,400 megabits per second and 3,000 megabits per second for reads. So with that, I didn't really notice any kind of issues on my system. Now, if you are running 8 gigs of RAM, you, luckily, you likely have a budget system. And if you have a budget system, then you're probably going to be somewhere around you know, using a regular 5,400 or 7,200 RPM hard drive, and you're going to notice a performance impact at that point. 
Now for video editing and content creation, for video editing, I tried rendering the same video about three times and every single time it crashed. So that wasn't a good look. Uh, to be honest, I probably could have gotten the render to work by tweaking a lot of the settings inside of DaVinci Resolve, which is the editing program that I use. However, I didn't want to jack up all of my settings. So if you're going to do content creation, I would recommend you highly that you're on 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, if you're just going to do gaming and you're going to do esports, to be honest, you could probably close down Chrome and Discord and some of those things and be able to get by. I would still go for 16 gigs of RAM and not 8, and all but just the cheapest, maybe retro gaming PC or something like that. Uh, for streaming, I did not test it with 8 gigs of RAM because we we're already maxing out the settings. So while it probably would have worked, it probably wouldn't have been great. And I got lazy and didn't test it. So you can do it yourself if you want, but I would just go with 16 gigs of RAM. All right, now that we know what happens with less system memory, let's see what happens if we just double from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes, because I always hear more is better and makes your system more gooder. So for the 32 gig test, I went out and purchased a 32 gig kit of Team Group. It is 3600 CL18. However, I went into the BIOS in my motherboard and manually clocked it down to 3200 megahertz CL16 just to make sure that we didn't have any speed discrepancies and we're just basically as apples to apples as we could get. All right, so taking a look at the esports titles once again, CSGO and Fortnite, they ran about the same with CSGO taking about eight and a half gigs of memory and Fortnite taking about 10 and a half gigs of memory. For the AAA titles or the harder to play games, once again, Far Cry 5, it came in at about 11 gigs, Borderlands 3 at 11 and a half gigs, Gigs and Apex Legends at 10 and a half gigs. So once again, everything is kind of lining up with the same type of memory usage as the 32 or the 16 gig kit of 3200 MHz CL16. But that doesn't tell the whole story. We should also look at FPS numbers, right? It seems only fair because I do have double the system memory from the 16 to the 32. So I should be getting better frame rates, right? So take a look at the frame rates. You can see they are exactly the damn same as they were with 16 gigs of RAM. Remember, just because you have more in your system does not mean the game is actually going to utilize it and that you're going to get better performance. The only way you get better performance out of more RAM is if your system can actually use more RAM or if you went to a faster memory kit or faster kit of RAM than you currently have, in which case you would see an improvement there, assuming your processor can run with the faster RAM kit. So our frame rates were exactly as they were before, and we really haven't gained anything on the gaming side. Now, when we look at productivity tests, uh, the renders that I ran actually ran exactly the same as well. Uh, once again, I wasn't peaking out the amount of system memory that I had at 16 gigs, so it hasn't really netted any difference for me. Now, I expect that to change when I do change my uh, RAM to use 3600 instead of the 3200 that we did for this experiment, but for right now, no noticeable improvement in video editing or rendering of those video files. And then once again, I ran a test stream and once again, just a game and a webcam and everything looked absolutely fine. Didn't have any kind of issues or anything like that. And I was able to record and once again was still under 16 gigs of RAM. So I could do all that on my system without causing any kind of issues. Now, once again, if you are streaming and you have a ton of OBS plugins or, you know, you're one of those people that have 287 different Chrome windows open because you don't want to have to open them every time, whatever, you're not looking at 200. I'm just not going to go there with you. But if you're one of those people that use a bunch of extra programs at one time, good for you. You probably would benefit from having some additional RAM, but don't go stuffing your system with 32 or 64 gigs of RAM thinking you're going to get better performance when you don't use enough to actually saturate the entire 16 gigs that you have already. But if you're a streamer or content creator, 32 gigs of RAM is probably a decent investment for you. Now, one other caveat is I would say if you're going to a platform with DDR5, I would suggest going to 32 gigs of RAM. Not that necessarily DDR5, you're going to use any more of that than you did with DDR4. However, keep in mind, DDR5 is not only faster than DDR4, but it has more capacity. And quite frankly, most of the kits of DDR5 RAM that I am seeing right now are actually starting at 32 gigs of RAM. It's actually really hard to find a 16 gig kit of DDR5 that's in stock but I'll leave links to all the RAM that I used in this in the description down below. They are affiliate links. Feel free to check them out if you're looking at upgrading. So if you made it this far in the video, I probably rubbed you the right or the wrong way and, and metaphorically speaking, don't cancel me, please. But if you're still around, consider liking this video and subscribing to not only my YouTube channel, but follow me on my other socials. 
And as always, guys, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video.